I'm not from here, bro. I'm, I'm from Texas. You know what I'm okay. saying? I do I do my little thing. And I'll be telling about here, everybody take business and stuff personal. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Sure. It's, it's, my money. It's, it's my money. It's my money. It's not your Yeah, right. <laughs> That was your boy Ching, who's in the studio right now, man. Yeah, yeah. Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn. That was a huge record right there, man. I gotta say, um, it was. It, you know, it was kind of weird when we made that record. We sitting in a little bitty apartment over there off Delmore and um, 170. I forgot the name of them apartments when I was creating that album Jackpot. But me and Sham, one of the producers from the Track Stars, we used to just sit in the house eating eating Emo's pizza, watching Baby Boy. <laughs> we used to just sit there do that and make music so he was on the drums you know just hitting the beat like doom, 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 doom. and all that man we were just sitting there like what can we what you doing nothing chill ain't nothing we just mumbling it right. you know and it was just weird i had had this young lady over there so we was like say this part what you doing nothing chill ain't nothing. <laughs> you know what i'm saying it just came about though and it was a big record man so you know that was that's what's up Okay, how was the experience working with Snoop Dogg? You know what I'm saying? He's definitely a legend, definitely an icon. So how was it like working with him on your first project? The experience working with Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was always a favorite rapper of mine since he came out. 187 on the Undercover Cop, you know, Doggy Style, all that. I always, always liked Snoop's style. So I always wanted to work with Snoop throughout throughout what I was doing, period, when I wasn't on to when I got on. So, so Holiday Inn, I was just... I was listening to it and just like, who can we get on this? And I thought to myself, like, Snoop would be hot to say this hook. So, you know what I'm saying? We reached out to him, got him on there, got Chris on there. We let Chris listen to it. I remember being in the studio when Chris uh, recorded his verse. Um, but that's how we got Snoop on it, man. I just thought he'd be hot on the hook. They let him hear it. He was like, I'm with this. I, I, I get out with Chingy, so I'm going to go and do it. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. So tell me about DTP Rayquan right now and the relationship you have with them. Well, with, you know what I'm saying? Everybody out there, Ludacris. DTP, you know, the relationship I got with DTP, we cool. Everybody cool, man. Some people don't be understanding that it's not personal, it's business. And, like, I talked to Chris over email, like, every other day, you know what I'm saying? We hit each other up. So it's all good. It's just business, man. Sometimes, like, when I got back with Disturbing the Peace, and that was the end of 2006, I had... I got off Capitol Records and did a deal with Disturbing the Peace Def Jam. And, you know, it was all good, but, you know, just a lot of business things within that deal didn't go as I would have liked it to go, and I felt like it should have went a different way. But I'm not blaming nobody, you know. It was just, it, it just wasn't really good business to me on the label end and it, my end too or whatever, however you you want to see it but i just thought it was i just it wasn't for me no more man so i just i wanted to get out of the deal but not getting out of the deal you know as as enemies and then respectfully getting out of the deal and everybody we was all cool we still all cool so it's just something i just something i wanted to do you know and at that time i was just going through a lot period man i wasn't feeling even doing music or nothing at that time you know what i'm saying i was like if i if i if i if i mess up i mess up on my own I was I blame myself. And with the, with your reemergence, though, you came back with um, what was the first? Was the first single pulling me back? Um, no, that that was for my third album. I was still with Capital. Capital. That was my third album, Hood Star. Okay. That was actually after my second album, Powerball, and um, we came back with Pulling Me Back. I hooked up with JD, Jermaine Dupri, and we uh dropped Pulling Me Back. But and also Jermaine Dupri is somebody that I've I've always been following his career since I was you know younger in the crisscross days and all of that. And I always wanted to work with Jermaine Dupri, and this is something that that means a lot to me. Is because as long as I wanted to work with Jermaine Dupri, man, my first time working with him, the very first record we did was a number one hit record. Yeah. Ain't too many people can say that. Well, when I work, saying, while working with Jermaine Dupri, they can say that, though. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. What I'm saying is, even everybody that works with Jermaine Dupri probably can't say oh, okay. their first time working with him. Oh, yeah, that's They got that. a hit record that was on the charts for six weeks at number one. Wow. That's what I'm saying. So that was a that was that was you know I, I I appreciated that and he also mentioned in his, he wrote a book and he also mentioned in his book man he was like you know I work with a lot of people been around a lot of people but when Chingy told me that he really appreciated working with me he was like I can really tell that that meant a lot to him and he was like I ain't never really been around nobody that you could tell that they really appreciate that like that and so that was that was what was up too I appreciated that.
Right, that's what's up. And well, with all the collaborations you did from Jermaine Dupri to Tyrese to Janet Jackson, like, what would you say is one of your biggest collaborations that you've done throughout your career? Well, one of my biggest collaborations I've done throughout my career, I would have to say, uh, a lot of people didn't know this, but me and Chris, we did a, we did a song with Britney Spears and Madonna. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, I don't know if it was compli- I don't know if it was label complications they was going through, or why it didn't, you know, uh, get out there. Whatever the case may be, but that was a big record we did. I did some with R. Kelly, um, Janet Jackson, a lot of people. But I would have to say one of my biggest records I feel like an artist that I worked with DJ Quick. Like DJ Quick always yeah. been a, he's always been my favorite artist. You know what I'm saying? Since back in the day with uh, Just Like Compton and all that. Sweet Black, you know what? Yeah, right. All of that, you know what I'm saying? So I get the, when I worked with him, I worked with him several times. And he gave me the honor of redoing one of his songs, Low Down Hood. I wanted to redo that song. And I remember us being in the studio. He was like, you want to redo that song? Well, bye. He, he remade the beat. He remade the beat right there and we just did it. You know what I'm saying? So DJ Quick is definitely somebody I got to say I always love to work with. Man. All right, trying to stay on the topic of favorite rappers. What is your top five for, um, rappers that are alive right now? For well, someone say Tupac. For well, someone say Biggie. Uh, uh, Big L was hot too. Big L was nice. Um, it's it's a lot, man. Like I, um, you know, of course Jay Z, uh, Lil Wayne, uh, Rakim. I mean, I could just go <laughs> L. L. Cool J. I can go so many different directions, man. It's just. It's crazy, so them, them just, them a few, and that was number five, probably. Uh, I know, it was like seven. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. all good, though, man. So tell me what you got going on right now. I understand you got a new mixtape dropping March 6th. March 6th, uh, Jackpot Back, you know, my new mixtape. Producers on our T-Dot, J-Class, Steel Throw, you know, so on C-Note, just to add a few, you know, and um, Track Murder. But man, that, that mixtape, I just, I kept the St. Louis on that mixtape. I got Sean Lee on there, just a bunch of artists from her. You know, my regular label, Full Deck. I got Lil Bit on there. I got, uh, what else I got on there? I got Hakeem the Dream on there. Oh, wow. I got, um, you know, the Fresh Thugs on there, Rich Money on there, Nitty. I got my other homeboy, Jay Just on there, Free Jay Just. Uh, <laughs> and that's, 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 that's kind of pretty much it right there. Kodak, Mr. Lee. I got them on there, my little cousins, but uh, just kept it St. Louis, man, and I just was, I just felt like I needed to put put together a nice little mixtape, all original music, and just put it out. So we're going to call it the Mixtape Street Album. Okay. Jackpot Back, March 6 is dropping. So where can we find it at? And also, what do you, and what do you expect this mixtape slash album to accomplish? Um, well, I'm just, I'm just giving the people some free music. I'm not really expecting it to do no wonders or nothing like that. I'm just, I'm just giving the people some free music to listen to. You know what I'm saying? Because, because a lot of people be like, where's Chingy been? Where's Chingy at this, this, and that? But I, I'm still making music, still doing my thing, still traveling. You know, I got I got like three tours coming up overseas in Australia, Asia, Europe. Um, just in a lot of town. I'm going to be in All-Star Weekend. I got a party down there. Um, but you can find a mixtape when it come out March 6th. You can find it on gapiff.com, livemixtapes.com, midwestmixtapes.com. Go to Full Deck. Full D E K K dot com, full deck dot com, and check it out. And you can go to chingy daily dot com. So you can pick it up right there. Right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, we got one with Chingy coming up right now. We got another one of his hot tracks. You know hey, man, man, tell me about this track right quick with Chingy and Tyrese. Well, not Chingy. You, you Chingy. <laughs> uh, this track, actually, Jermaine Dupri produced this track. I remember when Jermaine sent it to me, man, I was vibing real tough with it. And I was, I was, I, was, I, I did my verses, and I was like, who can we get to do the hook? So I had an upcoming event in L.A. So when we was in L.A., we was at this party, and Tyrese was there. And so I was hollering at Tyrese. I'm like, man, you know what? I got this record I think you'll be perfect for. I sent it to him. He sent it back. We packaged it up. We sent it out. He became number one. It was that simple. Well, it's that simple. We're going to get to it right now. Matter of fact, you can get to it. Yeah. Ah, this is boy ching man. We're going to get into Pulling Me Back featuring Tyrese and Jermaine Dupri right here. Let's go. Oh, black tie. Yeah, black tie. <laughs>